Anyway, uh, going to entertainment here. So, I think kudos for Sony here uh, for making this deal, right? So, uh, we talked about Disney. Uh, sorry, Sony making a big deal by parting up with Netflix before so that they can showcase their, uh, what they call this, showcase their films, not just their library, but ongoing films they're going to produce in the future so that there will be easy access for consumers obviously netflix is the biggest streamer in the world streaming services in the world well sony has made another deal by partnering with disney so they they just made a uh, partnership that's official so that they can bring the sony uh, the spider-man films to their disney library and also be able to showcase in their streaming services disney plus as well as Hulu here. Now, according to TheVerge.com, they mentioned that Disney and Sony have signed a multi-year content licensing agreement. So, it's a temporary, but but still, you know, it benefits everyone here, right? I mean, if you're a consumer, you know, I don't want just to have exclusivity of having to uh, subscribe to Disney Plus. But if I can, if I have a different subscription in other services, if Disney is smart, they would do that as well with their films. But that's a different discussion. But anyway, so going back. So this will bring Sony's theatrical releases starting, uh, not this year, but in 2020, 2022, sorry. So meaning all of the films in the future can be released uh, by then. That's for new releases, but for their back catalog, they can already uh, watch it in their platform. So obviously this deal gives Disney the rights to many of Sony's older film franchises. Obviously you have Spider-Man as one, and then I think, uh, what is the other one? Jumanji, I think, is another. So we'll see in a bit. Now, obviously, Spider-Man is missing in their catalog. Obviously, Sony owns that franchise. So it's going to be good for many Disney Plus owners or subscribers. So you can watch it now. And obviously, in Sony's theatrical... Oh, sorry, what was it? There you go. In Sony's theatrical release... So that's from 2022 all the way to 2026. So anything in between there that's released for, by Sony can be seen in their uh, Disney platforms. But there's a small caveat there, so I'll explain it in a little bit. So they will get to access uh, the film by pay one TV window in a sense, starting in 2022 as I mentioned. So meaning uh, after the film's theatrical release and home video, uh, when that run ends, uh, which will be owned by Netflix, which, which obviously Sony has the prior uh, arrangement with it. So that means new Sony films that will hit theaters first, then paid rentals and purchases, then it will go to Netflix and eventually finally head over to Disney platforms. So meaning Disney Plus and even Hulu. Meaning, uh, even though they might not get first dibs in the films, but they would eventually have access to those films, which I think should be you know the norm for all movie studios that every film should be accessible to any platform they just lease it or you know give a licensing uh right so that everyone can access it whether you know i like using peacock paramount plus or in this case netflix or whatever streaming service that make it difficult for your consumers to watch your content right anyway so obviously it's continuing to invest heavily in the mcu universe whether that's Good or bad, I mean, I mean, personal experience, I'm getting too tired of watching those cinematic uh, MCU films, which I think they're going to release the Black Widow, then Shang-Chi, which it's in a lot of hot water recently. So we have to wait and see how, how that pans out. But obviously too much of something is always not a bad, it, uh, it's always a bad thing eventually. But obviously if you're a Disney uh, plus subscriber it gives you a reason to stay subscribed in their platform now whether that's enough uh it's up to you so you have to decide here but on the other hand sony here will provide the other franchise as i mentioned you have jumanji and Transylv hotel transylvania just to name a few here so obviously this will boost uh the library that disney already owns from the disney films uh from the animated uh, films that they have they own and the uh, mcu then you have star wars just to name a few here anyway sticking with entertainment here in, in the films all right uh are you familiar with the john wick series right so they're going to make a prequel that is set in the 1970s so 
one should think that you should be excited, right? But here's the hitch. Uh, John Wick will not be present in that uh, sequel, a uh, prequel. So meaning, uh, there will be no Keanu Reeves, which is I kind of surprised that they went through with this because, you know, the John Wick series was synonymous to the character of John Wick, which is Keanu Reeves' character. And if you're not going to include Keanu Reeves in the prequel, who's going to watch it? And the film here, according to the executive producer, is focusing on the Continental, which is the hotel that that we see in the films where John visited throughout the film's uh, run here, right? So I, I don't know if it makes a compelling case here. But anyway, so according to IGN.com here, it mentions that the film would focus on the Continental as the setting here. So how the Continental came up, where I think character what was the main character there the owner i forgot who the owner was there uh machines uh character there right he was the owner of the continental but anyway so how it came to be and so forth but again the continental is synonymous with john wick and if there's no john wick the character here and you know who, who are we going to look forward to and they haven't mentioned who's going to be the lead character here right anyway so as mentioned, the Continental, the John Wick spin-off series that takes place 40 years before the film. So meaning, for sure, Keanu Reeves hasn't been there. It's not going to make a special cameo or appearance in that franchise, uh, in that particular film. So this is not good news. A anyway, so the new prequel series will focus on a younger character of Ian McShane's Winst Winston uh, that will be set in 1970s, which is, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me that it's kind of disappointing. They would have I think a, a good uh, strategy would have been do the prequel of the first John Wick, right? And focus on a younger John Wick. That would have been more compelling, right? Before he uh, become the Baba Yaga in, in that uh, in that storyline. Anyway, well, well, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, so they're stating that they're exploring the Continental, the the venue, as as mentioned. In the young Winston, how it came to be that how he and the team, uh, his team of Confederates, found their way into the hotel, which what they're known for it is 40 years down the line. So obviously, the Continental is a major location in the John Wick trilogy, where the assassin visited the hotel several times. Where you you can visit the uh, the hotel, where, but you, where there's only one rule: you can't kill anyone inside the grounds. And if you kill someone, you already know what happened in the first. Uh, first part, first film, and if you step outside of the facility or the hotel or its boundaries, all bets are off here. Uh, obviously, uh, for those who are hoping for Keanu Reeves to make an appearance, as I mentioned, you're going to be very disappointed. I was very disappointed when they mentioned this already and they confirmed it. So, making him uh, an executive uh, director, producer, not director, sorry. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. It, it has to be in the film. Otherwise, what's the story plot here? You're going to start all over again. You've already invested a lot in the character of John Wick, right? Rather than go back, maybe go forwards in the story? I, I don't know. Well, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. 